Harold, I'm afraid I need you to come with me. Oh, hi, Major. What's the matter? Is that leak bothering you again? It's your fine, your unpaid fine. I had a fine? You still do. Tubing without the proper credit on your tube card. Can you settle it now? Uh, no. But, but wait, I I'm sure I topped it up. Improper tube card management, Halibut. You surely recall that since last week, the Energy District tubes require your tube card to be topped up with blue credit. If an onward journey to the social district is intended, in addition to the usual weekly turquoise credit. We but only last month, it was a green. I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Now let's get you over to the fine secretary so we can all get on with our day. fell foul of the end-user insufficient funds clause. I'm afraid if you really can't pay, you're going to have to think of someone who can. I guess that means you'll have to wait for the professor again. Who knows what she sees in you? Right, I'm needed elsewhere. There's a disturbing rise in the number of people traveling without the appropriate tickets recently. I hope for both our sakes not to see you again soon, Harold. Okay, we are in. So what the hell are those credits? Okay, uh, what's the interaction? Can't you just put this on my account? I'll pay as soon as I... Mr. Halibut, you don't have an account. Not since we blocked it. Please, Mr. Secretary, let me just... I mean, look, can't we... <laughs> Your name is Mr. Secretary? <laughs> Uh, uh, my title, young man, is All Water Secretary Number 24. It is not my name. Anyway, I'm afraid All Water Corporation can't be seen to make exceptions. You'll have to go through the proxy payment process like everyone else. There were, there were the dark what the hell are these rules? <laughs> and slowly but surely, light returned to the fedora. A light held aloft by the hands of All so, Water Corporation. So, what are you in for? Oh, I'm just here for the great company. Aren't you a little young to start working for Allwater? What? No, I meant... Because it was a joke, doofus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Could you let me wait in peace now? Oh, sure. We'll do. Have fun. Felix? Hi, Ma. Uh, look, before you say anything... Whatever your excuse is, it'll have to wait. Busy, busy times. Mr. Secretary, please charge whatever Felix's fine is to the company tab, please. Of course, Mrs. Van Der Vaart. Have a pleasant day. You too, Master Van Der Vaart. Freedom! Have fun, Harold! What the hell? <laughs> what about me? We reluctantly interrupt your daily business for an important... <laughs> for some important information for all inhabitants of the Fedora One. Dear people, crew and company, we seem to have discovered something super cool. Please do consider to congregate tonight at the Agora Theatre to... for some important information. Oh, Harold, here you are. I've been looking all over. Get your buns to the lab, if you please. I do beg your pardon, ma'am, but there is still the matter of an outstanding fine for Mr. Halibut to find a proxy for. A completely reasonably priced and fairly applied fine, if I do say so myself. Sir, please do not cause me further consternation. Just put it on my tab as always. Come on, Harold. Do as you told. <laughs> Can we go on other rooms, maybe? No. So the company name is All Water Corporation. Mr. Halibut, you'll need this before you go. A ticket home? Yes, and only home. It's not valid for any other routes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And your tube pass should be unlocked again within 24 hours. So you'll be back to the luxury of fully automatic tube travel eligibility approval once again. I can't wait. 
Water Corporation. Every time I need you, Harold, it's something else. What's wrong with you? I can't handle your shenanigans while we're in the middle of this mess. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Next time... This must have an underlying cause. Hmm. I remember when you were still in school and your teacher telling me about how you would just stare out of the window, oblivious to her even shouting at you. Hello? Oh, what? You left me. I was never in a daydream, just the other stuff was boring. Harold, I'm not sure which is worse. The idea of you living with your head in the clouds or never being excited by life. Only boring people get bored. I'm sorry, Professor. I'm still trying to understand what is happening. Oh, whoa. What? <laughs> what was that? Central station, all water district, out of order. Which one? This one? Destination chosen. <laughs> what kind of... Enjoy your all water tube system journey. Water transportation. You have arrived. Please exit the tube in an orderly manner. We hope you travel with us again soon. But why isn't the line active? Energy district. I don't know the exact decision-making process that led to this, sir, but I assure you it will be for the good of your overall long-term tube traveling experience. So will we get discounts on the other lines as a result of the inconvenience? Ah, as of yet, there is no discount scheme in place. As we calculate... What's this one? Candle? Can't get in. Lab district, energy district. Which one should I go? This location is not accessible via your permission slip, and you know it. This location is not accessible via your destination decided. Enjoy the view. I'm interested to see what's the transportation look like but exactly Harold, why i'm tired of chasing after you like you're a stupid butterfly hang on what's a butterfly that sounds silly a butterfly is an insect from earth they had beautiful patterns on their wings and drank pollen from flowers i suppose you could say they often appeared in uh extra natural moments in life on the other hand they were terribly inefficient flighty overly trusting and delicate ergo you never take responsibility, and I never know where to find you next. I know I drift off a bit sometimes, but... But all water raised the tube fares again, and they never announce it properly. This time it really was an honest mistake. Plus, there was this woman who... Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. There's important work afoot. Oh, yeah. Have you checked the blockage in the filter station yet? And did you need to feed the fish, too? Ah, uh, yes. Those two. I'm on the case. Bye, Professor. <sighs> Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, uh, I'm sure those are all my tasks for the day. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. It really is a wonder you get anything done around here. Ah. Thanks, Professor. It's got a life of its own. Strangely enough, I noticed you hadn't added your daily task list to it. And I don't want to have to remind you about them again. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Uh, so, I access the list. It'll come back to me. Just go to the four selection buttons. Okay. Um, where were they again? The upper right of the pad! Ah, uh, yeah. Top of the four buttons, right? Open and close PDA. Cool. Then I use the navigation nub to highlight and then hit the bottom button. Precisely. Okay, great. And it's the rightmost button to go back. 
right? Indeed. Now hop to it. And I'll see you at the Agora Arcades when you're done. Okay, how can I navigate? I can navigate. Clean the filter station. Maro told me to clean the filter station like always. Maro reminded me to feed the fish. Optional task. <laughs> what? What's that picture? Add-ons, systems, account, balance, center. What are these? What? What the hell are these? Okay, the fish and the filter. This is the feeding fish station, I think. Frat, it's out of food. And better ask Cyrus about this. Question. Ask Cyrus about fish food. Aren't we? In ocean currently, why are we feeding the fish? Don't they have already food in the ocean? That's weird. Okay, so and the next one was filter. Where's the filter? And this area i'm not sure what the hell is this area that looks like a filter right no okay let's check that the stairs i really oh that's our room i think right the visuals are pretty cool. I'm not sure if you know this. Basically, handmade kind of like stop motion animations stuff. Not sure how they managed to create this uh, animation stuff, but it seems it's a combination of hand and digital. So that's pretty cool. And where should I go? Ask uh, to ask about fish food. Where is this iris? Uh, what are these? No. Out of food. Better ask Cyrus about this. What are these? So this game doesn't tell you anything. Basically, you have to figure out everything, I guess. There is no... guidance or anything lab quarters launch level one this is the tube Ah, Harold. Perfect timing. Oh, Senor Tenenbaum. You too. I was just hoping to watch some Sun Tzu's Ashk. Got any idea how to work the old telly? Yeah, I think it's one of those all-water ad-only models. Ah. Should still be good for watching the announcement on tonight, though, right? You're really gonna watch that? They'll just announce another tube price hike again. 
Well, who knows? Diego from Health Services said he heard something about the reveal of something important. The door will open. The door to your heart. Step through. Oh, I can't choose. Potions, potions. What is Sun Tzu's ask? Yes. Sun Tzu's ask. Eternal love. Best and only Turkish novella we have on board. I thought season 18 was bad. What with all the drama around Emery's cousin and whatnot. It's worth powering through to season 36, though. That's where the plot really thickens. I'll try to check it out sometime. What brings you to the lounge, anyway? Would you guess that the tubes to the utility district and the social district are down again? Strangely, yes. I can believe that. Does that mean school is out? Yep. The bambinos are happy, and I don't mind the time off. But if it goes on much longer, they'll forget everything. Won't they do their homework? Maybe. The whole social district is off limits right now, so at least there won't be much else for them to do. Is that why you're hanging out here? Mostly. It's just kind of cozy here though, you know? I suppose it is. Anyway, don't mind me, Harold. Bye, Chris. See you later, Harold. I'll be here if you want some company. That's a sad looking language. <laughs> just place with one person. WC, level 2. Filtration. Okay, so maybe we can do that filtration task. It's blocked. Oh, hello. Um, okay. What? What's happening? What are these? No idea what's happening. <laughs> These controls are so alien. Clean as a whistle again. That's it. Did we finish the filtration? Yeah. Okay, the filtration is done. Now we need to find that Chris guy. Anical concept of the observatory. Hurry, Chris. Please be Chris. Hey, Sai. Oh, hey, Harold. Uh, Cyrus. I mean, Chris, I not mean, uh, Cyrus. <laughs> Just doing my usual rounds. Trying to clean the fish and feed the filter station. Super nice. <laughs> what? How are the fishies doing? They're swimming away. Looking good. But there's no food left in the fish feeding machine. Ah, lovely. Yeah, I've been thinking about fish a lot recently. I've been wondering if, you know, even fish blood is such a good fertilizer, what, the slow release phosphates and nitrogen? But we don't want to hurt fish. If samples were taken, we could somehow synthesize the... Sai, Sai, that sounds very interesting, but what about the food for the fish themselves? Hmm? Oh, yes, sorry, rat. Didn't I restock the other night? <sighs> Must have just thought about it. I'll have to formulate some more. You make the fish food yourself? Oh, I do indeed. 
I'm working on a new recipe at the moment, in fact. But, I mean, can fish even taste? It's not just about taste, it's about nutrition. We want their gills to function optimally, don't we? And their pigments to express as vividly as possible, a bit like flowers. Sigh, sigh. New fish food would be great. I'm sure they'll love it. Well, I'll get right on it. Promise. Yeah, I think I have a test batch. Uh, yep, here. A uh, little taster to keep them going. Uh, you should try some too. Uh, thanks. I'll let you know what they think. That was a very... We are free out of... What? That? Was that fish real? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, even if it wasn't, their methods are getting way more sophisticated lately. Yeah. Mm, I kind of look forward to seeing what stunt they're going to pull next. Me too. As long as I don't have to clean it up. Do you remember their first messages? Ha, uh, yeah. Wasn't it something about Fedora not being able to take off being a conspiracy? Yes, on all those little flyers. Handwritten, too. What did that fish message mean, do you think? Hmm, I guess something about exploring the planet? Didn't it say what's out here? Ooh, like they've hidden something. Maybe they think the ocean is a conspiracy, too? Huh. So they are communicating with fish? What was that? Space toast? What the hell? No, 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 not there. Lap. Little fishy, your little dishy is now served. Okay, Herald bot diagnostic report. Scanning. Scanning. All tasks completed satisfactorily. Enjoyment evaluation. Minimal. <laughs> Energy levels depleted. Recharging required. Next destination. Agora Arcades. <laughs> that was so funny. Go to Agora Arcades. No, not here. Minimal satisfaction. Ah, where was it? Here. Hey, there is a good. Uh, I think I saw it on the tube elevator, right? Ah, why isn't this working? So typical. I suppose the ticket reactivation is still going to take a while. Okay, now what? Watch the announcement. Oh, from that lounge. Hey, Chris. Ticket not working. Mind if I watch the announcement with you? Well, be my guest. Not that I actually live here. <laughs> oh, it's starting. We chose the stars. Not instead of the Earth, but because of it. We chose sacrifice and responsibility. Uh, well, we didn't, I guess. But our ancestors did. 
and we wouldn't be here if they hadn't. Left, I mean. We'd be back on Earth. And where would that have got anyone? We may not have ever seen our home, tasted its air, or gazed across its boiling seas, but we remember it. And then we made a new home, even if it wasn't quite what anyone had in mind. And one corporation, over all others, helped make that possible. All water. On that note, I'd like to introduce Madam CEO Brenna Castlechop. <laughs> Good day to you all. As you may know, I am Brenna Castlechop, the CEO of All Water Corporation. More importantly, I'm a citizen of the Fedora just like you. And it's my unmitigated pleasure today to show you what you're about to see. Join me in reliving and celebrating the remarkable journey we've been on together before we unveil the next step of that journey. It may have started with one man, but it took the hearts and minds of many more to make the dream a reality. That dream began at the height of the Cold War, when the world was on the very brink of annihilation. He conceived of an arc-like spacefaring ship, financed by the wealthiest countries, families, and private institutions such as the Schlippmeyer Foundation, as a gesture of global care for the human race. That ship journeyed for 200 years, was home to five generations, and sailed past many solar systems, making fascinating discoveries along the way, like the bacteria that are now responsible for our energy supply, or the mineral samples we took from planets along the way that allow us to build new materials. We had difficulties to deal with too, such as surprise asteroid fields, periods of hopelessness, and the unpleasant, albeit brief, alien infestation. And of course, 120 years after launch, our last message from our beloved Earth in its final moments. After 200 years, we finally arrived at our destination, only to find that the promising, watery planet contained no habitable landmass and dense, toxic gases in the atmosphere. Hardly the second Earth we had hoped for. It wasn't long into our new search that the solar winds came. Maybe our ancestors couldn't have possibly known, or maybe they could, that they would cause our ship to crash, just like Icarus, but with worse luck. Either way, we can be thankful for a soft landing and good waterproofing. Wasn't that a wild ride, huh? We've achieved so much aboard the Fedora, but we've never stopped thinking big. We had the idea to make sure we weren't missing out on anything going on outside. We're in a whole new galaxy, so we should be listening to see what the local news is. So we hatched a new plan. A state-of-the-art, deep space radio boy capable of keeping itself afloat and slowly circumnavigating our watery new home while scanning for signals and interesting cosmic gossip. And... Wait for it. Yes, we're delighted to announce it's floating to the surface right now. That's right. The boy will be in position in another few hours. Big congratulations and thanks to All Water for making this possible. I'm excited to see what we pick up. That was some announcement, huh? Sure. Makes for some nice gossip. But I think they should fix the tube system or upgrade the TVs, eh? For this fancy boy drama, eh? Yeah, that'd be nice. What if there really is nothing else out there? Exacto mundo! We should be focusing on inner space before outer, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Speaking of inner space, I hope the tickets are working again tomorrow. Que claro! At least I brought some homework to Mark. Those bambinos will forget everything at this rate. And you've got your trusty couch. <laughs> yep. We've gotten to know each other well. Okay. I'm gonna get some sleep. Buona notte, Chris. Buona notte, Harold. Okay, I didn't know that they were traveling. It's you. Ooh. Please remember, the all-water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Get snug, not stranded. Yeah, I didn't know that they were traveling 
in space. I thought they were inside kind of ocean or something. Their technology for traveling is kind of weird. Traveling. Okay, time to sleep. Oh boy, what a day. Here's hoping tomorrow is a bit more relaxed. I could do with a day off. All this running back and forth for people is tiring, man. But Agent Harrelson, that's what they pay you for. Don't let us down now. It might be a little hard to sleep with the hammer and all those tools, Harold. Day what? 18, 20, 51 after crash. So we are in a planet surrounded by gas, poisonous gas, and we are inside kind of an ocean. There are no surface. Hello. Morning, Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. You remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now, activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. What? Activate the... Is it here? is in the container on the lower right. You remember oh, your okay. right? Bring it to the microscope and insert it into the hatch. That's what is it for then. Et voila! Check the microscope and finally you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one for... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Search for... Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Hey. Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no. I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. 
Oh goodness, you're Microwave Boy. So what? Did you remember me? Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you, I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Reserves are we in some kind of trouble. Reserves? Are we in some kind of trouble? Now I've said too much. Ask Moreau. Perhaps she'll tell you more. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him, which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. See you later. Bye, Richard. So... Dare I ask, what is it? So, Bridget told me about some kind of energy shortage and to ask you about it. Any idea what she meant? Hmm. Yes, she mentioned she may have found a link between something in the water and our solar wind problem. It's speculative, and now isn't the time. That all? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be off. Be good, Harold. Okay. Now we have to find... Harold, when you see Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay. I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, uh, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye. Especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... Uh, don't mind me, Harold. I just mean Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold... No, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. So there is no communication devices here to send messages or anything here in this giant space rocket ship. Okay, where should we go? Um, oh, these pictures change. <laughs> Message for Cyrus, search for the blue rock. Okay, this one I have to go to the tube, I guess. How do they, they get dry in this tube system? Utterly unconcerned for your own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard for the future of humanity. Harold, good timing. You can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold, come here and explain things. And yourself. Major, I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive. I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold, tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major... I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me, Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that? Unless you're in league with him. I just meant... I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but... but... What did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? What? <laughs> Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, 
Tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it! Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And good luck finding them. Oh no, Felix. Have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But, Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we, there's no... Come on, spit it out, man. Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix, where is Felix? What the hell? Felix? Harold, you've lost him. Gah. Why the hell did he blame me? What the fuck? Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary 24, of course. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed up. There are just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Okay, sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly All Water Raffle Bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from All Water to you, the citizens of Fedora. What are the prizes? What are the prizes? Well, there's a long list of luxuries. A plethora of pleasurable prizes. The full list can be perused at your leisure on the All Water Public Access Forum. Okay, I'm ready. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. What? Oh, this is the main area of the ship. It's kind of remind me of Bioshock. Message. Please select the category from above. Oh. Yes, Sleepy's double black diamond deals are now on for one day only. Don't sleep on the Sleepy's exclusive new campaign launch event. Visit Sleepy's today. cool all of the time with my patented consta cool fabrics so you see that's the slippy difference and if you just watch this exciting infomercial ah harold if it isn't my favorite multi-maintenance man wait are you sure i can't interest you in oh never mind hello how's business you're an everyman right i've made a new ad and i need your opinion I mean, I think it's great, but maybe it's too high concept. Oh, well, I'm not really qualified to... Nonsense, just watch. I was trying to read a book in the comfort of my own home, but my own home wasn't comfortable. It was too hot to concentrate. Will I ever be able to read to my children 
or enjoy the adventures of the Fedora 4 from my armchair again? Why, yes, of course you will. With my patented, tried and tested aircon system, you'll always be able to keep your brain, books, and body sweat free and as cool as Jimson Jameson himself. Please note, Slippy's aircon system is not officially endorsed by the creators of the Fedora 4 or their likenesses. Burr. Sometimes I just can't get cozy. How's a man supposed to look after his family with cold arms? My family are depending on me. What am I going to do? Clad yourself in one of our triple insulating cozy jackets and matching thermal underwear, of course. You know what they say, warm hands, warm hearts. Slippies means heritage. I'm the latest in a long tradition of winter sports enthusiasts. Slipmires throughout history have kept everyone from royalty to the common man warm and cozy in their pursuits of the great outdoors. Slippies means social responsibility. The Schlippmeyers were one of the most generous sponsors of the Fedora One project, giving back to the people, sharing their knowledge of insulation technologies and considerable wealth to keep humanity warm and cozy among the stars. Remember, you deserve to live and work at whatever temperature is right for you. With over 200 years of expertise, you can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies, heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. Well, what did you think? What the hell? So you sell air conditioner and jackets? Um, it was, there were lots of things and... Uh... Great! So glad you agree. And while you're here... I was just going. Ah, oh, come on. You can't go without testing my new half-pipe experience. It's new and improved by a little modification to my patented aircon system that I'm calling the Freezer! Is that... Do I have to... I'm glad you asked. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of! That sounds... uh, wait. Me? Skiing? But I don't... Nonsense! I'm sure you're a natural! Now let's get you strapped in! Okay, what should I do? What? <laughs> oh, oh! You were really blown away by it, huh? First time's the hardest. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> I guess I'm slippy by name, but you're slippy by nature. <laughs> I guess so. I'd really better go now. Sure, sure. But just so you know, I run a pretty generous referral scheme, if you're interested. For every customer you get. Got a dash. Okay, Harold. Be skiing ya. What the <laughs> How can I see these notebooks? Oh, these are just the pictures, I see. What do you hide in here? All water, remember. It's all water. Is that a frog on there? Who the hell are you? Oh, Ona. Hey, Ona. how is it going, Harold? Not too shabby, thanks. How about you? I'm super, actually. I found a book. Oh, cool. What kind of book? It was just discovered. A book written on Earth. Nobody on the station has read it yet. Apart from me. Wow, what's it about? Stick around, and you'll find out. My newest performance piece is a reading of it. Oh, nice. Which part? All of it, Harold. All of it. Without interruption. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up. Wow, okay. Good luck. Hey, 
Hey, buddy. Hey, Harold. Great to see you. How about that announcement, eh? Yeah, it was really something. It sure was. I try not to busy myself with those kinds of affairs. I'm just happy you're joining in for the station jog. The jog? Uh, I was only... Chris promised me he'd be here any minute. Now we've really got a jog team on our hands. I think I'll pass. No one's forcing you, Harold. But why don't you keep me company until Chris arrives? Okay, that I can do. How's the post today? Ah, oh, it's a bit slow, what with the tube to the utility district being out. So I can't really work. Not working makes me so restless. I hope it's back soon. Good thing you have the arcades to jog around. Yep. And Chris can't get to the school for the same reason. So at least we'll have plenty of time to work out together. That young man is almost as fit as me. Why do I feel like I'm the odd one out? Oh, hey, Chris. Last to arrive, first to finish. That's my motto. Harold, won't you stay? The jog team won't be the same without you. Yeah, venga, Harold. You can't leave now, I just got here. Jog team, jog team, jog team. Um, Let's see what's I going to happen. <laughs> go jog team. <laughs> come on, Harold. Keep up. Oh, Harold, come Guys. on. Guys. Just like, no. <laughs> I thought I was fit. I was fit. <sighs> you can't run. Go on. Without me. <sighs> Good show, Harold. How's everyone feeling? <sighs> I think that was a new personal best for me. Fine. Fine. Thanks, buddy. How'd you both keep so fit? Oh, you know me, Harold. I've been running around this station for years. Gotta keep up my reputation for same-day service after all. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's what keeps me going. Gotta set a good example for those lazy students of mine, too. <laughs> Have you got any tips? Just keep on moving, Harold. You never know when you'll have to slow down. So keep going while you can. The run. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, man. Welcome to the fish fish hut sample our homegrown fedora fish or our fresh water catch of the day what's the catch of the day today today we have the great spotted super grouper it sounds tasty uh, just out of interest is that a native fish Hard to tell man you know a few of the ship's fish escaped during the crash so we don't know if they thrive in the ocean or even intermingle with native species but we can guarantee that fresh super grouper taste you know and love. Fish, fish, fish hut. Can oh, I keep it? Fancy some fish? You know where we are. So they brought fish from Earth, but no other animals. <laughs> they keep eating fish in this station. They don't have anything else to eat, I think. Coming soon. Okay, now where should I go?
Someone put graffiti on the wall. It's an eyesore. Please clean it off. Still, you haven't found those two person. Where are they? Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Please halt for your contaminant inspection. Inspecting. 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 <laughs> no contaminants detected. Okay, open it. Open the door. Inspecting. Hello, Cyrus. Sir. How's it going? Oh, it's been tough, Harold. Every detail has a detail. It's like this filigreed. Oh, uh, it's good you're here, actually. Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3d printer it's leaving gaps everywhere oh okay shall i take a look yes please but i hope you're better with technology than you are with the ladies um, <laughs> i hope so too anyway see if you and your screwdriver can get this printer its third dimension back where is the printer you have to undo the screws first to remove the front panel Oh, all of them? What? <laughs> There's another set of the screws under that one. <laughs> Who designed this printer? <laughs> it's falling apart. Everything is falling apart. <laughs> and the screws are falling down. These panels are falling down. This is so stupid. Something happened then. Uh, keep going. <laughs> Ooh, I think you're nearly there. Now, you see that hole? Let me open all of them to see what happened. Nothing. Ah! Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sai, was the printer even broken? Maybe, maybe. If it's any consolation, I discovered this little trick the hard way. Ow! Why didn't you just fix it then? Well, where would the fun have been in that? I'm not sure I'd like your idea of fun. Hmm, funny. Sunny says the same thing to me. But I guess she didn't like your idea of fun either, eh? Ow. Think of it as a wake-up call, Harold. Yeah, a little extra juice. Oh, that reminds me. Moreau asked me to ask you, how are the details coming along? Oh, thanks, Harold. Just like her to ask that. Huh. <laughs> Is it? Uh, anyway, see you next time, Sai. <laughs> what the... What the hell? Not going to fix that printer? <laughs> Fish monitor. Uh, Harold, uh, one more thing. What is it, Sai? Could you take Maro a message? I suppose. Is it just gonna be like hers? No, no, no nothing like that. It's something definitely unrelated. So, what's the message? Oh, okay, fine. 
you got me. Happy? Just tell her, procedure smeecher, and that she puts the why are you in Cyrus. I don't know that's such a good idea. I mean, what is this whole thing about exactly anyway? She started it. Back in the days, we were both part of the Archive Club. She was always so darn keen to throw away all the rules and invent new archiving procedures. She called it a healthy distrust for calcified mental models. But all it did was stop us ever getting anything done. So, you disagreed about archiving? Precisely. But it was fundamental. I mean, we respected each other's work, but there was this deep difference. And I guess neither of us was willing to budge. So, what did you decide about the archives? That's not important anymore. Come on, man, sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so no message for her? <sighs> Just tell her I say hi. She'll know what I mean. Okay, catch you later, Sai. Mini message from Moro. Okay, we can't get there. What are those? Those are the rocks. Looks like they're rocks. Please halt for your contaminant. Ah, oh, come on, no. <laughs> I'm leaving. Okay, where should we go now? Central station. Location nominated. Journey commencing. All water thanking you. Thank you for traveling with all water. Hello there, little miss. Are you lost? You could call me Lise. And no, I'm just waiting for someone. Oh, is Lise like a combination of little and miss? No, stupid. It's my name. What's your name? It's Harold. Nice to meet you. Is Harold like R and old combined? Well, <laughs> I suppose it is, actually. Can you just leave me alone? I'll yell stranger danger if you don't. <laughs> okay, bye, Lise. Stranger danger. <laughs> Your drawings are terrible, Harold. Ah, hello there. Secretary 8? That's me, sir. Can I help you get where you're going? That's okay. I was actually wondering... Well, I've been speaking to your brothers. Oh, how nice. Which ones? Mr. 17 and Mr. 24. Well, I didn't speak to Mr. 24 about that, but... Ah, yes. Yes, good, loyal, all-water employees both. I dare say I've been a good influence. Although even my shining example couldn't extend to him. So, he's the fourth brother. What happened to him? Oh, <clears throat> I do apologize. I've got to see to, uh, matters. But I'm sure 24 can help with your inquiries. He has a better grip on the whole sordid affair than I do. Okay, Mr. Eight. <laughs> the mystery of the fourth brother. All water. Moving people every day. We know you enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome. Satisfaction survey and underwater pro employee. Mr. 24, hi. Mr. Halibut? So. I was just talking to your brother, Secretary 17. I mean, and <laughs> it was funny. Actually, at first I thought he was your other brother, 8. I'm sure he found it just as hilarious as I do. Do you need something? Only that when I spoke to 8 about what 17 said, 
He said to speak to you about what happened with your fourth brother. Ah, yes. Our wayward Warren, the fourth brother who went his separate way, choosing a life of gastronomical frivolity over contributing to society with all water. Oh, I see. Are you ashamed of him just because he didn't follow you all into working for the corporation? Is that why none of you like to talk about him? Actually, he tried, but he didn't pass the entrance exam. We suspect his heart wasn't really in it. We used to do everything together, and we were supposed to stick together. But he didn't study enough, and now... Yes, what does he do now? <sighs> Last I heard, Warren had started a food stall. I don't want to think about it. Okay, well, thanks for telling me about him. I'll leave you be. Welcome. I am All Water Automated Secretary Number One. How may I assist your All Water related learning? Tell me about All Water Time Introduction. Eight years ago, our illustrious and suave CEO, Brenner Castlechop, made the brave decision to tackle the inaccuracy of the standard analog clocks by introducing unified AW time. A ship-wide, perfectly synced system that ensures people are always in time, on time together. In a remarkable gesture of generosity, Fedorans were given the opportunity to exchange their old clocks and watches for free. An offer most people took up and thoroughly enjoyed immediately. There were a few skeptical holdouts, but they were eventually won over by peer pressure. Usually annoyed friends having to do the math when arranging a meetup time. As well as the generous tube system and other such all water service vouchers offered to them. When was All Water founded? The Municipal Freshwater Clarification Agency was formed just after the crash, but it was rebranded to All Water in 12789 AC, just prior to the introduction of the transportation tube system. So, what exactly does All Water do? All Water Corporation is dedicated to making the lives of Fedorans easier, more pleasurable, and more sustainable. Major services include regulation of the ship's day-night cycle, the tube transportation system, organizing the monthly all-water ball, balancing the energy budget, and overseeing the ship's water supply and filtration systems. All Water is also invested in exciting new science initiatives, some or all of which may be strictly confidential at this time. Please check with your nearest All Water Secretary about the status or indeed existence of such initiatives. Can you tell me about the current CEO? CEO Brenna Castlechop began her All Water career at the age of 16. She graduated from her internship to a full-time position after she devised a mathematical theory to reduce the calculations needed to make different electronic systems communicate with one another. These improvements would eventually become the basis for the ship's current intranet system, architected by temporary all-water employee, a redacted, codenamed Dr. Computer. During this time, the Schlippmeyer family and the Freshwater Clarification Agency were engaged in a dispute over the ship's water supply, the former holding a chemically-based freeze filtration system over the current but outdated machinery. Castlechop wrote a proposal to improve the existing system by overhauling its connective mechanics, which led to all water being able to reject the Schlippmeyer's costly license fees. Her expertise, including her initiative to renew the physical connection between water reservoirs, filtration systems, and the various districts, eventually evolved into the tube transportation system and saw her promoted to sub-chief of the directive branch of operations. She finally became CEO in 13152 AC after widespread pressure throughout the organization on the incumbent CEO, Dr. Rufus Bureaucratze, to finally step down and let the Wonderkind take charge of all water at last. Goodbye. The All Water Corporation wishes you a pleasant day.
Thanks for his lessons. Also, AC and BC in this game means after crash and before crash, I think. <laughs> Where does it go? What does... I, I couldn't read. There was something written. What? Hello? No. This guy doesn't <laughs> know something is here, someone is here. Ah, oh, hello, citizen. Oh, hey, Captain at Large. Call me Zoya, please. What can I do for you? Just doing my rounds. Do you need anything? Me? No, I'm doing great. We really pulled it off, eh? Oh, do you want some help putting it back on? Uh, uh, hey, no, the announcement. <laughs> Wasn't it epic? And don't you think I did pretty darn well? Uh, yeah, there were lots of announcements. And I liked the bit where you... Ah, yes, that was a nice touch, wasn't it? Maybe people will see that I can be useful now. That I can lead. Take destiny in my own hands. Destiny? Yes, destiny. Oh, speaking of which, I must get back to work. I've got an important new announcement to work on for Madam CEO. Thanks for stopping by. Not weird at all. Not weird at all. Also, he has a chicken. <laughs> Oh, where is home? Oh, graffiti. What good is asking where is home anyway? Where else are we gonna go? Could they just leave some notes around? I wonder if this is the light keepers again, or just someone copying their style. Will they ever reveal themselves? My hand. <laughs> that was painful to watch. <sighs> like this. Yeah, my hand. Okay. Still need to find this guy. General store at the. Oh, I was there. How could I? Why I didn't find him? Let me get that message to you first. Hey, Professor. Got a message from Cyrus for you. Out with it then. He says, Hi. Hi? Just hi? Yeah, just that. He said you'd know what it means. He's a sly one sometimes. I'll give him that. Stubborn as a mule. What's a mule? Oh, don't you start, Harold. Leave me be. I've got to think of a comeback. I mean, get some important work done. <laughs> Mr. Seventeen. Correctly calculated. I can't offer you another raffle, I'm afraid. That's okay. I understand. But I asked 24 about Warren. The way some of you talked about him, I thought he'd... Something bad had happened or something. Something bad did happen to him. I'm sure 24 told you about his entrance exam, but that's not the whole story. 
We would have supported him anyway, but he began to be disparaging about old water, suggesting that maybe it was for the best that he didn't get a position. So that's when you fell out? Uh, I, I think so. It's complicated. It's been a long time since we spoke. He went off traveling the station on some chaotic quest to find culinary inspiration, I believe. I see. I mean, 24 and 8 didn't make it easy for him, but I don't want to bore you with the family history. And I need to get back to revising these raffle ratios. Okay, see you, Mr. 17. There is more to number f four. I mean, number the fourth brother, not the number. I don't remember what number was he. Tim, what do you think about huh. the announcement then? Well, I think it sounds exciting, Alon. You think everything sounds exciting? Well, that new boy thing and all might give us something new to natter about. That new boy, Tim? What's it going to pick up anyway? Alien radio drama? Not sure, Alon. Maybe we'll get some fancy pictures. Seems to me be more interesting to go sideways than back up top. You're going sideways, Alon. Right you are, Zim. It's all this sitting around nattering with you. Hey, Tommy. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon? <sighs> or, I mean, I can come back later? Oh, uh, no. What do you need? It's just that... The professor and I need some sea rocks, I mean, filter rocks from older times, that have come from the filters, and I feel like you might have one. Shh, quiet! Don't be mentioning Filter Frankie! You know that every piece of my inventory is legally obtained, or, or legally found, right? Right, sure. That's why I'm here, to legally acquire an item of yours that you may have. Okay, look and listen here, Longy Long Pants. I shut the store for a reason, you know? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. You sure you don't want me to come back another time? It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Ah, uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? Search for the blue. Check on Brigitte. All water brother. The three all water brothers are shunning their renegade brother. There must be a reason why. But nah, but how do I find out what it is? Tommy refuses to open up the general store because of relationship stuff with Brigitte. Maybe I should go to the energy district and see if there's anything I can help her with. Harold, if you're going to lecture me. I wasn't. Well, swell. But could you leave me alone anyway? Oh, that guy was supposed to perform a show. Let me check. What's this? That's oh, that's the rock. There's the blue rock, the bane of my day. Where's Tommy when you need him? There's the blue. Where's Tommy when you okay, need okay. him? Okay, 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 okay. Can I go here? Oh, I can. Ooh. Controls are ready. Hard. It moves so fast. Whoa.
Oh shit. So is there any point playing this game or just... There's an achievement or something. Eve, not there. Oh, sorry, Eve. Can I help you, mister? No, just came to visit Rafi. What you playing? Oh, some game. I'd rather be reading, but here we are. What do you like to read? Anything, really, you know. At the moment, hegemony and the pan liberalism agenda of agnostic psychopolitic, mostly. What? <laughs> That's a book? <laughs> yes. Say, did you know Captain at Large Baronhout holds the high score in this game? No, that's cool. I always wondered what those initials at the top of the leaderboard meant. Yeah, well, see ya. What's this game? Rapid Force. It's the same thing. It's really hard, to be honest. <laughs> I can't see where I'm going sometimes. Boom. <laughs> out to the school and the social district is out oh right makes sense annoying that's not what's annoying oh kids everywhere all the time no school means no peace they're just hanging around taking space playing all the arcades oh dear but isn't that what this place is for kind of? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh <laughs> I see. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> that look was so cool. <laughs> Ona? Harold? Come on, give me a clue about the plot. No way I'm ruining a surprise for you. Let's just say it's an epic Bildungsroman told through multiple narrators set across the ancient Byzantine Empire, the far future planet of Gazorpazor, and the then present day of 19th century Papua New Guinea. Wow, it does sound pretty epic. What's it called? Nebola. So, where did you find the book? Huh. I have a friend in logistics. There were a couple of unopened safety deposit boxes. Unopened since launch because the owners hadn't actually made it onto the ship. The statute of limitations ran out. We cracked them open and she gave me a call to see if I wanted this book. Whoa. What else was in the boxes? Oh. I didn't ask. But I wonder who it belonged to. Yeah. And why they never made it onto the ship. Some mysteries will never be solved. Oh, but maybe I'll base my next interpretive dance piece on that idea. I can't wait to see it. I'll be watching. Good luck. Thanks, Harith. Hope you enjoy the show. You have a cigarette? Where did you get that cigarette? Another round? <laughs> Buddy, you got a sec? Always, always. Take as many seconds as you need. So you've been the postman for ages. What was it like before the crash? 
The main thing that's changed is people get their mail quicker now, thanks to the tube system. Say what you will about all water, but you can't knock free... Well, I mean, mostly free movement of labor and letters. Ah, but I remember now. One time, probably a few months before the crash, I had to deliver a letter right across to the other side of the station. Everything that could have gone wrong on that delivery did go wrong. First, I tried to take a shortcut and got lost. I had to go through some construction works and lost my hat somewhere along the way. Then I got back on track, but tripped over a rat and tore my uniform. I stopped to get some food along the way and burned my mouth. Never been back to Charlie's silly chili grilly since. <laughs> and you know, what would it have looked like to the letters recipient if I'd turned up hatless, red-faced, bruises on my knees? Well, I was already late, so I went anyway. I posted the letter and sat down on the bench opposite to catch my breath and fell asleep. When I woke up, she was standing there looking concerned at me. Her? Um, yes. Anyway, no torn uniforms since the tube system was put in place. Bye, buddy. See you, Harold. What are you doing there? Oh, there's Bridget. And Chris? What are they doing in there? I can't hear them, but maybe I can lip-read. Hmm, seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying... You monster, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Tommy would realize... It's just... It's just not worth the risk. Ooh, Chris is replying. Let's see. It's totally worth any risk. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm, pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip reading classes. <laughs> lip reading classes. Okay, what should I do now? Reconnect with Tommy. Ah, oh, come on. Hi, Sai. Oh, hey, Harry. So, you and Sonny seen much of one another recently? Well, not that much. I'm sure you know what it's like. I bet you didn't see that much of her when you two were together, even. She certainly is a wandering soul. Hmm, yeah. It'd be nice if she wandered into her dad's life a little more every now and again, but... Hey. I try and let her grow her own way. Last thing I want is her deliberately avoiding me. Back to Tommy. Please halt for your inspection. Destination determined. Now, relax. Water. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Hey, Zoom. What do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? Yeah. I'm I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the harvest office. Non news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought you know I should mention. What? Who was she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Just Senor Tinnerbaum. Gah, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. If I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Tommy, I'm sure it's not like that. I just... You don't understand, Harold, what it's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna take this lying down. 
Tommy, I don't think you should uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. You did the right thing bringing this to me. I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damned store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll bet she knows you... You're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign. Tonight, make it into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my, nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. T plus B. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. Might even put on a different outfit, now that I think of it. Will you go and look for Bridget for me? Oh, come on. Why me? <laughs> There's no other My dear person. Bridget, I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget. Will you let me back into your heart and take this monument to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you, and I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. No way we've got an energy problem here. That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you for your help, Harold. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Ah! Oh, oh no! The what the fuck? Where is the stone? This. Where are you going? Ah, oh, Harold. Listen about the rock. I'm really sorry it's gone. You know I would have loved for you to have it. Ah, uh, it's okay, Tommy. It wasn't your fault. I just feel bad, you know. I was so wrapped up in my own stuff, maybe... Oh, I don't know. Thanks, Tommy. Maybe it'll turn up. I'm just glad you and Bridget made up. Thanks, Harold. You're a swell guy. I'll keep my eyes peeled, let you know if I hear anything. Thanks, Tommy. Major? Harold! If it transpires you had anything to do with this wanton violation of code 7887, then so... No, no. I want to find the rock more than anyone. Hmm. Say I believe you. Can you think of anything that might help us find the culprits? I'm sorry, Major. I'll let you know if I think of anything. See that you do. That missing rock is a stain on my sheet of justice. I will. Bye, Major. <sighs> Be good, Harold. Bridget? Harold, how are you doing? Uh, you know, same old. Yep, same old here too. Energy issues? You heard that, Mr. Busy Ears? Ugh, but yes. I mean, we've always got to be careful and efficient. And, you know, this isn't public. But I want to be extra careful right now until we figure out what's going on. Is the station using more energy than it used to? Well, yeah, especially the transportation system. And the damn tubes or tickets never work and just get more expensive all the time anyway. Right. Remind me why we can't just reduce the transport system? Huh. I ask myself the same thing. 
Every time we add some new upgrade or expand it, it eats up more energy. Our production process doesn't get any more efficient. Plus, when we held an anonymous vote about it, the majority of Fedorans said they'd rather have more transport now rather than more energy later. So... You know, I'm not sure I've ever understood exactly how the energy process works. Gosh, why are you asking me this now? It's not exactly a line answer. Look, if you really want to know, swing by the energy harvest office sometime and I'll break it down for you. I'd better go. Thanks, Bridget. See you, Harold. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how they produce this energy. Okay. What the hell should we do now? Who has stole the stone? I need to pick me up. Have you got any motivational phrases for me? You can't save time. You can only spend it. That's very motivational. <laughs> I need to pick me up. Success is luck. Failure is the only guaranteed way to learn. <laughs> okay. I wish it didn't have to be me, but someone has got to tell Moreau that the Blue Rock is gone. Okay, we have to get back to Moreau. you a message oh thank you miss zoodle pleased to make your acquaintance so it's from felix he says there's something he wants to show you and to expect a secret message soon oh what why i mean and why couldn't he just have said that to me himself i don't know go ask him my work here is done where's mister thanks good evening fedorans the old water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Please attend to the necessary travel arrangements. Get home safe. Professor, you're not going to believe this. Why does that not surprise me? The blue rock. It's gone. You found it? You lost it? It was stolen from Tommy's store. This is utterly vexatious, Harold. I know. What shall we do? We? I need to think. <laughs> Madam CEO, you're going to want to hear this. I'm listening. It's the new boy, ma'am. It's picked up a signal that we have reason to believe originates from Earth. Earth? Have you reverse dated the transmission? We have. It was sent in 2102. So 126 years after we left. Things would have been pretty rock bottom back there by then. Let's hear what was important enough for them to call after us. Maybe it was their final farewell, huh? <laughs> I hope it's nothing too awkward. Okay, I'll send a copy via... Well, just play it to me. I've got a 1205. But, Mom, it's only 10... And one of those. Okay, playing back now. This is Earth. Earth to the Fedora. Boy, you were sure you're all okay. Whoever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Johnston! Cut the damn line! You're live! What? Oh, fudge! Professor, did you hear that strange message? It was hard to miss. It's the first message from Earth. Ever? Certainly in my lifetime, at least. I wonder... What kind of message would a dying civilization speculatively send to a ship that can never return? What do you think it means? It means that the fact Allwater haven't shared it publicly yet means they're thinking about how to turn it to their advantage. What if it's not the first message? Don't be paranoid, Harold. What reason or authority would they have for keeping messages from us? Still, even if they had planned to share it immediately, they look suspicious now. Gosh, that message could be anything. Maybe they've got information for us about our mission. Hmm. Well, what could that information be? If we presuppose...
Yes? Oh, it's you. Yes? No. Indubitably. Fine. What? 15%? Out of the question. Okay, sure. See you shortly. Harold, I want you to come with me. Huh? To where? What? Who was that? Why? It was the CEO of Allwater Corp, of course, asking me to jump. What for? How high? Indeed, Harold. Indeed. Well, unfortunately for my bath, she was adamant we went there immediately. She even unlocked our tube tickets for emergency night travel. But why? What does she want with us? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? Come on, let's not keep Her Highness waiting. What the hell happened? Crisis control. We need to get out there ahead of the turn in public sentiment. First move advantage and get this working for us, not against us. Yes, come in, come in, come in. Now, as you both know, time is of the essence. Sorry, where are my manners? Would either of you like something to drink? Ah, I suppose I might like a coffee. There's really no time for coffee. Time is of the essence. <laughs> Professor, would you like to sit? No, thank you. I prefer to stand. Oh, a woman of action, I love that. Anyway, we must act. Due to the unfortunate communique incident, we've been forced to move up the schedule. It's imperative we deliver some good news about the start procedure. Hmm. I suppose that wouldn't hurt. To that effect, Professor, and um, you there, I'll need you to supervise Cyrus directly. We can't afford for any unforeseen delays. Cyrus, he works best undisturbed. The man is a stubborn buffoon, but there's no doubting his thoroughness. Professor, please. It would do this old heart good to know that you were keeping a watchful eye on him. Or maybe your, um, protege here could do it. I'll hang out with, I mean, watch Cy, sure. If it makes you happy, Madame CEO, we'll make sure Cyrus delivers. Great. Music to my ears. Thank you both. You've done all water and the ship a great service. We're ready. Go live and stay on schedule. Another announcement. It's my privilege to announce to you all today that our new boy program has already proven an unmitigated success. We present to you now the full and unedited audio that represents the first incoming message we've received in our lifetimes. Now, before the message plays, I'd like to take a moment to reiterate just how proud we should all be of progress on the new start procedures. It won't be long before we're ready for the first attempt the latest in a long line of steps on the road to a greater, brighter future for us all. Please enjoy this message, brought to you by the All Water Corporation. This is uh, uh, the Fedora. Well, we sure hope you're all okay, whomever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Things were pretty rocky here when you left, of course, and, you know, that was a brave move. Probably the right decision at the time. We didn't know whether to even tell you this, but we figured maybe it would give you some comfort way out there in the freezing clutches of deep space. What? Oh, right. Yeah, I guess. Or, I mean, even better, the comforting, warm embrace of a lovely, habitable new planet. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we pulled together down here. The sparrows calmed down and things pretty much worked themselves out. Life still isn't perfect. Bananas died out, and you've got to be pretty careful around water. But by and large, we're back on track. I've survived. Wish we could send you a postcard. Anyway, be safe, and maybe one day we'll get a hello from you. We'll be listening. <laughs> That's what are you all still fucked doing up. Here? Don't you have work or something to do? Scram! Return to the lab. Bit. 
You have to go back to bed. Why did you stop? Does it mean that we have to follow him? Baronhout? Ah, uh, hello. Uh, how are you, uh, um... I'm Harold Halibut, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you are. Harold, tell me, have you ever felt lost? Oh, I always get lost around here. Uh, no, Harold, I mean, feeling like you have no purpose. I know my purpose, but sometimes it doesn't seem very important. You heard the leak, I presume? Yeah, of course. That leak... That one message, it's undone me. If my whole family, this whole mission, the ship, my captaincy at large, what if it was all a mistake? Oh, I see. Well, maybe Earth didn't get as bad as people thought it would, but we're still us. And you know, it wasn't us that chose to fly away. I suppose. Speaking of which, have you ever lost someone, Harold? Have you? Yes. Someone important. She's gone, Harold. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? Coco has taken an... unscheduled leave of absence. Oh, so she's not lost forever? No, I'm sure she'll return eventually. But every moment without her, I spend in longing and despair. Is it anyone I might know? My beloved? Her name is Coco. Oh, not sure I've ever met her. Do you want to see a picture? Coco is a bird. Harold, you're such an understanding sort. Could you try to find her for me? I'd look for her myself, but in these uncertain times, I think it's best I don't leave my post. Are you sure you wanted to be me looking for her? Whatever are you implying? I'm sure you're perfectly capable, um, and I'm thoroughly and otherwise engaged. So, about Coco... Yes. Such a loyal first mate. Does she maybe have any favorite hiding places? Hmm. Not that I know of. I did find her once in a broom closet trying to hatch a sea sponge inside my hat. I promise to keep an eye out for her. Oh, Harry. I hope she's okay. I'm not sure she has another friend in the world. Bye. Another task. Coco. Hey, Professor. Oh, are those the new teacups? Come and see for yourself. Oh, I promise I ordered them. Harold, just look. Is that the rock? Ah, oh, yes, it's right. It's a rock. When you're lost in the dark, you have to go deeper to find your way out. The light keepers. Who the hell are light keepers? So, if the light keepers could get the rock and they knew we wanted it, that means that uh, they must be someone who. Harold, it's late and we've had enough excitement for one day. Let's leave the theories until tomorrow. Sure. I'm just happy that whoever they are, they're on our side. So it seems for now. Good night, Harold. See you in the morning. Okay. Night, Professor.
Time to sleep. Oh. What the hell? Imagine that hatch on the roof doesn't open when you are. <laughs> oh my god. That's going to be so fucked up. Whoever made that leak must be feeling pretty terrible right now. I'm glad it wasn't me messing up for once. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Time, do you call this? Uh, good morning, Professor. The time is. I know what the time is. There's lots to be done. How are we going to find out who the light keepers are? I'm just as curious as you, Harold, but we have better things to do. I suppose you're right. How can I help? You can start by taking the rock to Bridget. She'll make the necessary preparations for analysis, which you should be able to handle. Okay, great. I'll get right on it. And Harold. Try to remember that whoever the Light Keepers are, our jobs here are to make life more stable for the people here, not less. I know. I know. I'll get going. The rock delivery. Where did you put the rock, Harold? Hi, Bridget. Are you ready to rock, Harold? I have it here. Ready. With rock. Oh, Harold, you can be such a killjoy sometimes. Anyway, it's going to take a while to analyze this little guy, so I'll send for you when it's ready. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Bridget. Oh, Harold? While you're here, maybe you could help me with a little something? Uh, maybe, but don't you think... Now, now, you'll do quite well. There's a little experiment I've been wanting to run. The remote control of the conveyors isn't working right now. My theory is Cyrus and his mugs of tea that he always forgets about before knocking over. So I need your help to manually control them. Can do. I'll be in here recording and analyzing the data. Right, see that button over there? The big one next to the conveyors starts and stops them. I think I can handle that. Yes, well, don't get cocky. I'll give you more detailed instructions of the loudspeakers as we go along. Where should I go? Okay, so there are three different types of organisms on the conveyor. Each is a different color. Are they pretty? See, don't I make life easy for you? But I want you to focus on the red ones for now, since we're comparing their data to past readings. Red ones. I got it. I'd be worried if you didn't. Anyway, pop them under the green machine next to you and stop the conveyor, please. Okay, great. On to the next step. Now, you see the analysis machine? Go start it up. The machine's UI is pretty easy. There are just two buttons. One to chop the sample, and one to coat it in our lovely space bacteria mix. Chop and coat. I see. Right. I'll be prepping the actual data recording in the meantime. I'll let you know exactly when to start the process. Wait for my command. Just like comedy, timing is everything here. Now! 
Great. Time to coat the sample. Okay, great. Now show me what you got. Hmm, intriguing. Okay, we need two more readings to have a representative data set. Nice one. Now on to the next step. Now. Great. Time to coat the sample. Nice. Let's see what we have. Ah, I see. I see. Just the one left now. What about this one? Harold, please, we haven't got all day. It has red. Okay, great. On to the next step. Now. Great. Time to coat the sample. Nice. Let's see what we have. Ah, I see. I see. Nice one, Harold. That's everything we need. Meet me back at the control room and we can look over the results together. These results... It looks like our catalytic bacteria is starting to have diminishing returns on the energy output. That's not good, right? No, but it also doesn't make much sense. Why would the bacteria have been fine until now? I'm not the best person to ask. What could have changed? I'm not sure. I've run the tests. The key variables, pH level, density, etc., are all stable on the bacteria. We're using the same organic matter for it to convert. And I've been double-checking the filters. They're filtering at the same levels as always. I mean, could something outside the ship be to blame? It is possible that somehow the organic matter is being affected before it hits the filters. But none of the tests we've run on the matter itself shows any key variants. Hmm, strange. Are the energy returns diminishing very badly? I'm not panicking yet, Harold. It's just a trend we can't let continue indefinitely. Unless we can miraculously find a whole new system for producing energy. Not panicking at all. Oh. Oh dear. I should get back to Moreau, but just let me know if there's anything else I could do to help. I'll keep you posted, Harold. And thanks. Harold, the filter station seems to be clogged again. Please unclog it properly. Someone put graffiti on the wall. It's an eyesore. Didn't we clean that up? Also, we wanted to talk about how we produce the energy, right? Hey, Harold. Hello, Sai. How's the start procedure going? So-so, I've got an awful lot to get through and no one to help me with it all. That's not true, Sai. Madam CEO asked us to keep an eye on... Uh, I mean, help you. Hmm, what do you mean, asked? And I? Uh, just that, you know, uh, she was concerned about you, I guess. Hmm, huh. well, she must really trust me. It's not like I'm one of the ship's foremost experts in molecular sciences. So... What is your procedure idea exactly? So, there are a couple of stages to it. The first stage is all about our current stasis. As we all know, the ship's weight and the fact certain sections are full of water gives us a stable buoyancy. And because of the tide, we're in a very slow and long orbit. So, we start by pumping some of the water out through the ship's thrusters, accelerating our orbital trajectory. Then comes phase two. Once we reach a certain velocity, we pump 
more water into the unused core. We must sink deeper toward the gravity well, which will tighten our orbit, but keep the speed, thus building greater momentum. Yeah, like those ice skaters when they crouch down in a pirouette. Oh, those videos are great. When you get slippy to let you borrow them, anyway. Ooh, is that where you got the idea from? Um, no, my idea came from much less frivolous scientific principles. Mm, but yeah, they are good vids, as I was saying. Once we reach max possible speed, here's where it gets fun, we pump out all the water. <laughs> but not all water, that would be mean. At the same time, and use the sudden extra buoyancy to break free of our orbit on an upwards trajectory towards the planet's surface. Oh, a bit like an ancient cephalopod. It, well, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. It, how on Fedora did you know about that? Oh, I found a book lying around in the lab called Masterminds of the Deep. I kind of hoped it was going to be an adventure novel. Ah, interesting. But anyway, here's where it gets tricky. As the fedora is still going to be denser than the surrounding water, our velocity will slow down the closer we get to the surface. But if we time everything right, our initial slingshot should create just enough momentum to allow us to break free the ocean surface for about a minute. Like a flying fish. It'll be so weird to see the sky. Focus, Harold. This is the most crucial part. We must launch the thrusters at exactly the right moment if we wish to achieve escape velocity. Too early, they'll be waterlogged. Too late, and we'll crash right back into the sea. Wow. Psy, that's an amazing plan. Think it'll work? Oh, in theory, absolutely. But there's something in my calculations that seems... off. Now, I've checked everything, but I can't pin down the variable. Like, the timing? Um, kind of. Now, if I didn't know better, I'd say... Time itself. Okay. Anyway, what did Maro say about what Madame CEO said? Oh, she said she trusted you and that there was no need. Did she now? Uh, yeah? Hmm. <laughs> Knowing her, she did it just to spite the CEO. Anyway, you seen Sunny recently? Um, no. Not for a long time, actually. Since you two went your separate ways? Mm hmm. She said she needed to find herself. Well, I'm sure she'll turn up eventually. Were things all right between you? Yeah, it was, you know, we're, we're two different people. Sunny alone is at least two different people. But I'm glad it wasn't anything too dramatic. Anyway, back to work for me. Yeah, looks like you've got it cut out for you. Good luck, Sai. I think Sai has a crack. On his neck. <laughs> okay, what we were planning to do? Filter. Fixing, cleaning, fixing, running around and fetching stuff, bringing stuff. It could be worse, but there must be more. More to life? Cleaning, fixing, running all around. Wait, what's that sound? Last time we didn't do this. Isn't there more? to life I clean and I fix till my legs feel like bricks my best friend is a mop I work till I drop and for what? no medals or treats I don't get silk sheets but oh I'm the first guy they call for a leak there must be more to life I could be an artiste, my name would be fetid, or a chef whose every dish was celebrated. But maybe this is my destiny, trouble and strife. And perhaps that's okay. At the end of the day, what more could there be? 
to life. Oh, sorry, Harold. Ah, hey, yeah, hey, Tommy. Sorry, you startled me. I'm a bit startled myself. What brings you to the filter station? Just, you know, I should probably be going. But you just got here. Anything I can help you with? I... I was just looking for Filter Frankie, but I guess he's not around. That guy can be slipperier than a jelly deal. Yeah, I've never even met him. right -o. I'll be going now. See you, Harold. Oh, okay. Bye, Tommy. Don't you want to close this? Our sample has been prepared and is ready for analysis. I've got a good feeling about this one. Do I have to go back there now? Bridget. Oh, hey Harold. Done with the sample already? Hmm? I'm here for the sample. You silly goose. I messaged you saying I sent it to the sample shelf. Oh, sorry. I missed it somehow. That is what the conveyor system is for. To save us from running all over the place the whole time. I know. I guess I just... Did you really think I'd make you come all the way back here to pick it up? No, I mean... I probably... It'd be madness. People running around, fetching stuff by hand. None of us would get anything done. Yeah, my bad. I'll go get it from the shelf. Although, while you're here... Thanks, Bridget. Sorry to bother you. Bye. <laughs> she wanted to do more. Let me give us more tasks. Okay, now we have to go back to our lab. And analyze the sample. Are we going to analyze it without the professor? Where is she? Oh. Take a look what all the fuss is about. Hmm. Oh, yes. I see. Very big marks. A dense rockiness. Troubling, uh, strata. Implications huge for origin of it. Possible comet fragment. Judging by the composition, could have been from far away. Mm-hmm. That is... Ah! Professor, you scared me. This is... We've been thinking all along about... This data suggests... Hmm. But... Huh, that would contradict... Hmm. The potential implications... What is it, Professor? It's these readouts. I think I know what they mean. Oh. What have they told you? The rock strata looks like carbonaceous chondrite. Rare? But the aminos? Backdating. It's a countdown. Great. For what? Our relaunch window. The sample finally reveals a pattern. And it means there's a two-year gap between the otherwise constant solar wind storms. We're approaching that window. Fast. And if we miss it? We wait. For 80 years. Most of us won't get to see the next one. Wow. So can you work out how long we have? If my calculations are correct, we're fast approaching the end of the current two-year calm period. In fact, I make it exactly 89 days we have left. Do you think we'll make it? Hmm. Not unless we find a miraculous source of energy to properly power the ship. I doubt it. I need to double-check some of this data urgently. Oh. Oh, dear. Okay, Professor. I'll leave you be. Hmm. 
What? Yo, Harry, it's Felix. I got some big info. It's sensitive. You're kind of cool. So if you want to know more, meet me at the Agoro Arcades tonight. If you tell anyone, I'll send your fish free into the ocean. We have a fish. <laughs> So we haven't found Coco. Coco, are you here? Yo. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Hey Felix. I'm here. What's with the secret? Shh. Wait. I can't tell you anything with all these people around. Uh, okay. We have to wait until everyone leaves? Yes, that's the deal. Okay. Well, I wish I'd known. I would have brought a book or something. What are you reading? Oh, just the latest in the Fedora 4 series. Is that the beast from below? Oh, no. It's Persephone's Lament. Oh, I thought the beast from below was the latest one. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, look. Is that Cherry Bafflesop? Who's that? Come on, you don't know Cherry Bafflesop? The food critic from The Chronicle? I'm a kid. I don't read newspapers. Well, the cartoons, obviously, and I quite like the Agony on column, actually. I think that might be Cherry, too. Oh. So, do you ever think it's strange? All these people, all their own homes, lives, thoughts? Maybe they don't even know we exist. Well, I mean, they can see us. Yes, but that's not always the same thing, is it? Oh, I suppose not. So, how's school? Why? Did Mr. Tenenbaum ask you to spy on me? Chris? No. I was only wondering. School's school. I try to concentrate, but it just seems... pointless. I mean, what do you need to learn to do what my dad does? And I'm sure they're not teaching us about what my mom does. But you need to just learn in general. You can't just know what you need to learn yet. Huh. I just feel like I learn more by exploring myself. Well, can't you do both? You can always explore, but you can't always get someone like Chris, I mean, Mr. Tenenbaum, spending all day helping you learn. Huh. I suppose it would be cool to know everything. Good evening, Fedorans. The old water tube system will shortly be closing okay, for the night. Okay, it's time. Please I hope it's worth the, the wait. Oh, it is. Coast get is clear. Safe. Follow me. This, my friend, is the Tunnel of Secrets. It looks like a ventilation shaft? A small, dark one. Sure, that's what they want you to think. Come on! It's pretty cozy in here. Just follow me, and trust me. So you promise you won't tell anyone about this? Promise? I mean, who would I tell? Moreau? She'd just say I'm making up tall tales again. Well, I think you'd better tell me a secret anyway, just so we're even. Um, okay. I guess that's only fair. Well, one time I dropped something into one of the filters, so I had to... Wow, ew. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that'll do. Felix, come on. Can't you tell me where we're headed? Good things come to those who wait. So, how well do you know these tunnels, Felix? We're not lost, are we? Okay, trust me, I've been exploring these for ages now. Whenever my parents are away, or yeah, I need quiet space. There's so much of the station people don't know about. I mean, could they even fit? <laughs> Probably not. And I'm glad they don't try. They can't be that bad. Oh, they're fine, just so busy, always. And they let me get away with a lot. You could try not getting into trouble in the first place. 
Oh, come on, don't tell me you're a goody two shoes. <laughs> I doubt the professor would think I am. She's not your mama, right? Nope. But she's been kind of like one. Hmm, so what about your. Are you sure we're not lost? Not long now, don't worry. way before we only had the same stuff to look at mostly gotta try find new angles huh did you read that somewhere no i don't think so anyway here uh not for me thanks and not for you relax it's just gum smoking is a dumb adult thing anyway oh okay i'll take one thanks <laughs> he looks they like a cool kid the scout a man who dared to go where others wouldn't or couldn't he wasn't one for the limelight but he was good at his job he mapped out new lands the light keepers made him an offer work for us they said a lesser man would have taken the money but the scout works best alone he can't be bought only the scout sees things for what they really are looks to the watery horizon while everyone else stares at their shoes if only they understood the scout is a legend we've been trying to track him down for years if anyone can find him it's you agent harrelson so what do you think is going to happen now that earth is okay Everyone wants to go back, but... Yeah, it'll take a while, right? Too long. Let's move on. Again? I think we are going to drop here. One, two. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Told you. Are you okay? Oh, I think so. But everything is going cold. Ah, you probably landed in a condensation puddle. Where am I? How do I get out of here, Felix? I I'm not sure, but good luck and we'll meet up later. I don't let Good anyone luck. See you. We can't blow our cover. Okay, Felix. You take care now. Ha! Says the man who dived into a shallow puddle. See ya! Oh, it's the CEO office. Yes, yes, 100%. And let me circle back to you on the... Oh, Slipmire, please do sit down and come in. Ah, uh, Madam CEO, have I got news for you? I should certainly hope so. Time is money, and I can't spend time on empty chatter. With so perilous a palpable public perception problem. Well, now you've had a chance to test my new super chill air con system. Have you given my start procedure idea any more thought? Surely you don't want to rely entirely on Cyrus. Yes, about that. I can still hear those blasted mice in the vents. So it can't be that cold and therefore not that efficient. If the system can't scare some mice, how's it going to form the basis of a relaunch? Hmm, I don't want to presume, but did you turn it up to max? Yes, up to ten. 
Ah, I thought so. You see, this one goes to 11. Well, why wouldn't you just make 10? <sighs> Whatever. Will you do the honors? Of course. You just gotta click the dial past the little bit of resistance. Like so. Give it a few minutes to kick in, and those mice will be micicles! Good. Perhaps you should work on a prototype. We're going to treat people to a little public demonstration in ten days. Get the public buy-in, perhaps even a vote. Hmm, seems like there's hope for your aircon yet. Those mice are feeling the chill. Yes! I think... I mean, I'd love another day or two to tweak the cooling coefficient. No extra days. This has already gone on long enough. We need to be seen to act. You know me, I'm all about moving fast. But not too fast. We can't cut corners on this. The stakes are too high. I'll keep it on the straight and narrow. But if you can, find a way to speed it up. Say no more, Madam CEO. Just wait until that demonstration. You'll see. Now about those all-water co-branded mittens we discussed. I can't stay in here any longer. Or I'll become a herald sickle. But the CEO was answering to someone else. Uh, another higher up? Someone else? We don't know about yet. Oh. What? Is this the bathroom? Uh, I guess the air con really is efficient around here. What a day. Time for a Hello? <laughs> Goodness, Harold. Where have you been? Sorry. Excuse me. Come on. Let's get some tea in you. Thanks, Professor. That does sound nice. Uh oh, we're going up. Open, open. Oh, so shit, that's so close. Huh. You yeah, are a very simple place. So, where have you been? And don't say you got stuck in the filter pipes again. Ah, uh, no, well. There was a puddle, but... It's okay. You're here now. That's the important thing. <laughs> oh, dear. Do have some tea. It makes everything better. Ah, yes, I think I will. Ah, warm. You need to remember to look after yourself. A stitch in time saves nine. I do. I just... This was, um, extraneous circumstances. Extenuating circumstances? What exactly have you been up to? Well, it's hard to explain, but I was with Felix. He showed me the vents. They were nice. But then I fell through a grate next to the CEO's office. From what I could overhear, I think something pretty serious is going on between Slippy and Mrs. Castlechop. Slippy? I hardly think he's her type. No, 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 not, not romantically. It sounded like Slippy was working on his own relaunch procedure. What? That would be most vexing. Why would Castle Chop have told us about this? I don't know. Maybe Slippy himself wants to keep it secret for some reason. Well, I don't have much hope that Slippy would solve the problem. But it could be disastrous if he convinced the CEO that he could. I wonder whether those light keepers are aware of this. It seems probable. What I can't deduce yet is what their agenda is. Yeah. Things have been crazy, though, with them, all the all-water news, the rock, now this. Yes, very irregular, not at all fitting with the usual models. Perhaps it's all connected somehow. Oh, could be. Did Slippy or the CEO say anything about what the procedure would be? Not really. All I could tell is that it somehow involved Slippy's patented air con system. Intriguing. Well, if this baffling pattern keeps up, I'm sure we'll find some new perplexing puzzle pieces soon. I'll keep my ears to the ground. Yes, you do that. Just watch out for puddles. Huh. I'll do my best. Well, 
Let's sleep on it. You look like you could use some. Sounds good, Professor. Hutsu! Good night. Night, Harold. And don't catch a cold, please. I'll try not to. Night. Look at his nose. Well, that was not how I imagined today to go. Hopefully tomorrow will be nice and normal again. No surprises, no excitement, just good old routine. Hachu! Uh, that darn air con. Hachu! Uh, I better not wake up with a cold. Ninety eighty nine days left until the launch window closes. How do you sleep with that oh, light? Waking me up from my swim and dreamies. Maybe Above your head. Uh, seems like something is up. Better go check the lab console and see nothing has exploded. Surprise? There seems to be something wrong with the filter station again. This thing loves getting me out of bed. that an alien kind of fish or creature I don't know how did it end up there
is he okay? It is breathing. We should be hesitant to ascribe deterministic gender terms to fishy here. Their race may not even have gender, biologically or culturally. Oh, sorry, yes. Sorry, fishy. It just feels unfair saying it. Perhaps when fishy wakes up, we'll be able to exchange theories about the formation of gender identity and its sociological impact. No doubt it'd give us some fascinating insights into the anthropological and biological imperatives of their society. But is... are they going to be okay? Let me see. Essential life signs seem stable. Surface moisture looks acceptable. Keep an eye on them. If they look to be drying out, give them a spritz. And what do we do next? Just let me think for a minute. Should I go get more help? Let's not be hasty about telling anyone else yet. There are all kinds of ways someone, namely Allwater, could get this all so very wrong. <laughs> Makes sense. There would be so many questions. You'd never be able to concentrate. Exactly. All those things will get in the way of us taking good care of this. Yes. Yes, and when they wake up, it's all going to feel pretty scary. We'll do what we can do. We just need to keep them safe until I can finish conducting the tests. I mean, you know, health tests. What about keeping them secret in the storage room? I could keep the boxes in my room. Hmm. Yes. Proximity to the lab. Humid environment. No other access. Yes, that should be suitable. Good idea. Let's move them in there. Gosh. I'm no expert, but they look really poorly. Don't worry, Harold. You did well to bring them to me promptly. They're in the right hands. Now, let me concentrate. Okay, I'll get to clearing up the storage room. Wouldn't they need water? To be in water, I mean. Is it? That's too heavy, Harold. <laughs> this time, please pick up a larger box or something. Come on. This is stupid. What happened? What is that? What is happening? Is it supposed to be a Tetris game? <laughs> of boxes and stuff? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell was this? I think I'm done with the box room. Wait, let's move them in there. Harold, can you get that? Hold it up and put it on speakerphone for me. Will do. Enjoy your new home, Fishy. This is Maro. No, it's Cyrus. What? Cyrus? I'm Maro. Yes, I was trying to call you. You've succeeded, perhaps unfortunately. Yes, well, 
Just for once, listen to what I have to say. I'm listening. Good. You sound faint, though. Am I on speakerphone? Yes, I don't have time to stand still every time you need me, Cyrus. What is it? So, Slippy is here. One moment I was all alone working on the hydrofusion coefficient machinations and thinking how interesting it was that... Sai, I really do hate to interrupt you, but not as much as I hate not interrupting you. You were saying about Slippy? Yes, well, the next moment he was here. He's rootling around, asking me all kinds of questions I don't want to answer. Can't you come and, I don't know, scare him off? I'll see what I can do. Give me five minutes. Okay. See you soon, I guess. Thanks. What was that? Nothing. Bye. Hmm. Harold, as you've heard, I've got to go and babysit. I've taken a blood sample from Fishy. Can you rush it to the pharmacy? Get it analyzed, then get some suitable transfusion based on the results. Can do. I'll go right away. Is it looking okay for now? Just fine. It's stable, and hopefully the results will help us with the missing pieces of this little fishy puzzle. I hope so. Thanks, Professor. Good luck. <laughs>